show. Academy Award nominated Sarah Pauly is known for her work on camera as an actor and for directing acclaimed films like Away From Her and Take This Waltz. In her debut book, Run Towards the Danger, she opens up about past traumas and the role that memory plays to help us move forward. Please welcome to the show, Sarah Pauly. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, great to have you on the show, Sarah. Uh, so Run Towards the Danger. This features six personal and poignant essays touching on a lot of the challenging parts of your personal life. Why was now uh, the time to write about these topics in a book? And question, why um, not showcase it perhaps through film? Sure. I'm, I mean, I've been working on a lot of these essays for many years. Some of them I've been writing for 20 years. And... I was never sure if or when I would share them with anybody. Um, they were sort of me trying to figure out and create a shape and a narrative around really perplexing things that had happened to me. And ultimately, the shape the book took was the each of these six essays, I think, is almost more about recovery than about trauma. So events in which things went a better, different way in the present and allowed me to have a different relationship with memories that had been troubling in my past. Mm. The book was actually born out of a traumatic, almost career-ending brain injury that you had in 2015. And that led you to a treatment that allowed you to revisit some of the most, as you say, dangerous stories in your life. So talk about this treatment and how did writing, in fact, help in your recovery? Sure. I mean, I, um, I had a concussion that really, you know, I had post-concussion syndrome that lasted about three and a half years. And I ended up at a clinic in Pittsburgh um, with Dr. Mickey Collins, who gave me a very, very different advice than what I had been given. And um, along with a very specific treatment plan, I would want everyone else just running out and doing this if they had a concussion. But I was told to basically run towards the symptoms that caused me the most discomfort. So anything that caused brain fog, anything that caused a headache, anything that I was scared of doing because I thought it would exacerbate my symptoms, I had to do more of that my brain was getting weaker at what it was avoiding. So hmm. this idea of run towards the danger, which was a quote from him, it made its way into the rest of my life. And I started looking at things differently and moving towards situations that caused discomfort in order to strengthen my ability to handle them. Wow. I mean, that's fascinating. Wow. Um, the essays are beautiful. You write um, in these essays about your time as a child actor. I mean, we remember you so much, and our viewers might remember you uh, for starring in television series Road to Avonlea, among so many others. But you've opened up about the harrowing stories that came from working in show business from such a young age, um, also returning to work after the death of your mother and setting out uh, on your own as a young adult. So what was it like for you to go back, to run towards the danger of mm -hmm. sort of recalling these memories? I mean, ultimately, it was an amazing experience. It was really difficult. It was really uncomfortable. It felt dangerous. But it, it coming out of it and sort of, recalibrating what these stories meant, given that my life ended up going a better way than it did in my in my childhood. It ended up being a really um, amazing experience. I think I felt very free when I finished writing these essays. That's so beautiful to hear. Uh, now let's speak about one of those essays entitled The Woman Who Stayed Silent. And in it, you revisit the memory of an encounter that you had with Gian Gomeshi at the age of 16. And you say that you, for years, held onto the story privately. So why was now the time to break your silence and share that story? There was sort of no good time to do it, to be honest with you, including now. Um, it's not a story I think I've been particularly looking forward to sharing, but it also felt like there was a conversation to be had here about what trauma does to memory and the inconsistencies. Um, and the strange behavior that it seems strange to other people who haven't been through an encounter like this or who uh, haven't researched it. Um, the way that people behave both during and after an experience like this can be really perplexing. And it certainly was perplexing for people watching the women on the stand um, who didn't have a background in this. So I've always wanted to offer up my own mess, my own inconsistencies, and show how much closely they echo the experiences of those women. Um, but there was never a good time to do it. At the time um, that this story broke, I had a toddler and a newborn, and I knew how arduous this encounter with the legal system was going to be. And so I knew it wasn't then. Um, and, uh, and I think I've been working my way up to telling this story for many, many years. Mm. 
I mean, thank you for sharing that. I mean, this, you are such an interesting person because of uh, your incredible acting career as well. You've played some really intense roles in films uh, like The Sweet Hereafter, Go, and My Life Without Me. Um, and halfway through the book, you write that you gravitated towards roles that you felt you could express pain as those roles kind of offered a catharsis. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, I think I had a lot of stuff pent up from my childhood, and I also had really severe endometriosis, so I was in physical pain a lot of the time when I was younger. And so knowing that I was playing the role of somebody in pain, I knew I could always express that. There's hmm. never going to be a day where I couldn't express that, whereas if I had to play someone really happy and cheery and light, there would be days where it would be very, very challenging for me to express that. So I think a lot of my choices professionally came from what I was grappling with. Well, I'm not going to make you sit on the couch and explain this, or maybe I am, because speaking of <laughs> movies, you recently revealed uh, in an interview that you discovered the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, now so, you're going deep. Now, now going this is getting deep. uncomfortable. I told you. We're on the you're couch asking for the hard a reason questions here. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it, Sarah, about superheroes that you enjoy? And I'm curious <laughs> to know what, like, a Sarah Pauly superhero would look like if you were, like, in a Marvel film. Oh my God, I don't know. All I know is that there was a moment in my third pregnancy where I lay on a couch and watched Marvel movies for about two or three days. Um, and I'd never watched a single one and I'd always been kind of judgy and obnoxious about them having never seen one. And I had the best three days of my life <laughs> and I felt so shame-faced about my previous uh, judgment. So I remember just like watching Iron Man and ordering myself a cheeseburger and a chocolate milkshake because that's what he was eating and being really, really happy and realizing movies could be fun, which I feel like no one ever filled me in on before. Somehow I missed that. <laughs> and movies could actually make you not want to go and sob for, of course, that's <laughs> still the kind of movie I want to make. I still want to make people sob for days, days, but you know, there don't it necessarily is. want to watch them all the time. Um, listen, I, I need to ask, like we still have a little bit of time and I wanted to get into, I, I don't think I even shared this even with the producer, but uh, my dad and one of our horses was on, a, on an episode of Road to Avonlea. Excuse and it was actually an episode where Christopher Reeves was playing a villain, actually, and I don't oh, know if you okay. recall that episode, but it made me think, like, who would you want to work with? Is there, you know, you're a fan, you're in the industry, you're a fan of the craft, like, who is on your list that you're like, man, it would be so good to work with them? Oh, my God, there's so many people. I love Samantha Morton, the actress, I think oh, is amazing. Yes. Um, I'd love to shadow, you know, Martin Scorsese on a film and just watch him behind a monitor. Um there's a million people. Do you yeah. think that you, like, are you going to be venturing back into the <laughs> acting world? Or is it now, going forward, there's different ways that you want to express yourself? I wouldn't be close to it, but it's not something I'm actively seeking out. I mean, I'm really focused on writing right now and thinking about filmmaking. But it's not, I'm sort of not close to anything anymore. I think there was a time where I thought I'd never act again. But I think the process of this idea of run towards the danger and writing this book has sort of made a lot of doors open for me that were closed for a long time. Mm. Well, that's interesting. I know you've got the little ones. Like, if any if any of them were like, Mom, want to get into the biz, you started as a child actress. Well, actually, one of them is very much interested in being, being a child actor, and the answer is a very firm no. Um, so I can say from experience... Um, it's, it would be my advice to not say yes to a kid wanting to do it. I think it's a great <laughs> profession to do older. I think there's amazing um, activities for kids to do amateur theater stuff, kids theater camps and groups. And there's a million ways to express yourself creatively without having all the pressures of an adult. Mm. Sarah, it's been so great talking with you today. Thank you for sharing you. some time with us. Thanks. Nice to see you guys. Uh, and everyone watching, you can pick up a copy of Run Towards the Danger wherever books are sold.